Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another video. Today we've got a bunch of topics to go through. We're going to get straight into it, especially because it's absolutely boiling in the UK and I don't want to be in here long. So Sevilla and Chelsea are already negotiating for Jules Kunde. This is good because we heard it was going to start happening again this week. The proposal of 55 million euros, including bonuses, is still insufficient, but the parties maintain open contacts. This has been reported by these guys. You choose whether you believe it or not, pinch us all, all that usual stuff. But it's good that, you know, we said it was said before in previous reports this week, Chelsea wanted to get this thing done, <clears throat> whether we get him or whether we don't, so we can move on to potentially other targets. 55 million euros is where we're currently at, so I think, you know, if there's maybe like 10 added on to that, I think this deal is like done and it's wrapped, right? So I don't think there's that much between Sevilla and Chelsea at the moment. I think we're very close to it. Um, whether, you know, we get it done this week, we can hope so. We've seen that, you know, we're starting to move quicker on deals now, so it is very possible. Um, but it's a good sign, you know, we're, we're in open contacts, we're constantly going back and forth. I think it is just a matter of time before this one ends up over the line. And then we have this outlet report in saying Sevilla are convinced that Jules Kunde will go to Chelsea. That's another just little tick in the right box, right? If they're convinced it's happening, then it means they're looking for replacements potentially, you know, they're, they're planning for life without Jules Kunde now. Another update, it says, I expect official offers will go in for both Kunde and Kimpembe this week, and the plan is to sign both if we can agree fees. If Chelsea sign both Kimpembe and Kunde, it means that Levi Colwell is expected to depart. That's coming from Simon Phillips. And to me, uh, I've seen a lot of this Kimpembe and Kunde. I really just don't understand where we're not just going to get one, and then, you know, we've got a strong front, a back line then, and we can implement Colwell into it you know Colwell doesn't seem to be pushing for the move that much it's just that he's saying well look if you're going to replace every position possible and add to the defense then I, I can't be here you know it's important for him to develop whereas if he knows that he's just going to get some game time then you know he's willing to accept that but if Chelsea are going to push him out and go and get two defenders Kimpembe being one I don't think we realistically need then you know, it's their choice, but I will be bitterly disappointed if this happens, so we'll see. This week, I really do think, is going to be the end of one or both of the deals, because we've been moving quick. Kunde, I hope, is the one that ends this week. And then for Brits Romano, just sort of backing up what's been said here, but the key line, Barcelona have to be fast now after discussing Kunde's contract for a long time. So Barcelona's still in this. If they're going to go for him, it's going to have to be quick because like he's, I think this is implied by Fabrizio Romano that Chelsea are going to move quick. So Barcelona's still in it. If we lose another player to Barcelona, it's just going to be rattling. But Chelsea moving quick, you know, Kunde very happy to join us. So I think if we can get this fee sorted out, terms have agreed with Kunde for ages. So we should be able to get this one done. And then with the news of Delit going to Bayern, we have Chelsea Target will be available this summer for a fee of around 35 million euros. You can see him pictured here, it is Benjamin Pavard, and that is that Bayern Munich are open to selling him, it says. So, you know, very much, not even just like, eh, we maybe will let him go, like they're open to letting this guy go. And whether you think Pavard is good enough or not to be a Chelsea defender, you know, looking at some of his stats, 26 years old, so still fairly young, Definitely more right side on the defense. His strengths are his aerial duels. 32 million he's valued down. They're looking to get 35. You know, that's fairly reasonable. Very tall. You can see this heat map here. 25 total appearances last year. No goals, one assist. Uh, seven clean sheets in that, which isn't bad at all. Ground duels won about 60%, call it that. Aerial, 73. So it is a very dominant aerial center back out in the Bundesliga. Average over score rating 7.02 for the year in all competitions. Couple injury blips, but nothing, you know, crazy, nothing outstanding there. Listen, uh, given that he can play centre back, probably as you can see more so on the right side, and can cover on the wing and the wing back position, I think Pavard could be an okay option. I know there's plenty of people that think he's, you know, not going to be Chelsea standard. I absolutely get that. But we've seen Tugel improve players at this team, especially the defenders. And I think, you know what? Pavard, France international, capable of really being a top top defender under Thomas Tuchel. If, if it's in a back three, I think more so, but the back two maybe not so much. So maybe we won't go for him. But it said that Chelsea have had interest recently. It mentioned up here, Chelsea have shown interest recently. So maybe this is another option for Chelsea. And that gives us, you know, more options is always a good thing. But I think plenty of people will say they don't want Benjamin Pavard. Let me know what you think in the comments. So we have an update here on the Armando Broya situation. 
And this is a quote from Tuchel saying he twisted his ankle and he needs further examinations and treatment in London. It did not make sense to just have him as an additional player because we need all the capacities of treatment for the guys who are actually fit, right? So that actually does make sense. There's no point using him in this, you know, squad when there's players that are trying to get fit, ready for the season, that will need that squad. So it makes sense, but for Richard Romano, West Ham and Chelsea are still in talks on final details of the deal, like potential buyback clause or not, add-ons, but the agreement for Amanda Breuer is really close and it will be a permanent deal. Breuer is now pushing, that's why he's flying back to England. Now, maybe Fabrizio was right on this one, you know, that's why he's flying back to England. It would also make sense that, you know, he's going back because he needs to have scans and stuff done on that. <clears throat> maybe we could have done it out in America, I don't know. But Armando Breuer is really close and it'll be a permanent deal. So if he's going to West Ham, it's not going to be a loan. I've seen 30 million or so as the figure reported. If Chelsea let him go... One, I think it means we need to sign another striker, right? Because if we're going in with Havertz up front, maybe Timo Werner, I don't have faith in us scoring that many goals. So it means we need to bring in another striker. If he also goes, there has to be a buyback clause. If we're getting 30 million, then she'll put the buyback at about 55, 60. And, you know, that means that, okay, we keep the money that we, you know, got for him from West Ham. And then people, when, when we re-sign him, if we return him for 60 million, then we've already got that 30 million of it, right? Like, we got that for him. So, essentially, we'd be buying him back for about 30 if it was, you know, 60 million and they buy him for 30. But, I really disagree. I think Chelsea should be keeping Armando Breuer. What's the harm? He's under contract. He can stay for another year. If Chelsea really are just open to letting him go because they don't think he's good enough, I can understand, right? Like he didn't—he wasn't insane at Southampton, but he has shown strong signs. He's come to the academy doing very well. I just think it sets a bad precedent to be not not giving the youth a chance at this rate. But if Brewer is pushing, maybe there's not much Chelsea can do to help. Maybe the attitude isn't quite there. Maybe he's, you know, refusing to train, refusing to play, whatever it might be. Right? Like we don't know what the situation is. But for Chelsea, this doesn't make much sense. We're losing on a striker when we desperately need a striker. And it's a youth prospect that's, you know, going to have been at the club and we'll sell and make a, you know, a healthy profit on, don't get me wrong, but, but potentially lose out on a top striker. And that's something we really need. So for me, incredibly silly to let this one happen, but it does look like West Ham are going to get him, which is just disappointing, especially given the Declan Rice saga, right? And we're going to let them have one of our top young talents. It's, it's just crazy. Then we have sources close to the Daily Mirror have revealed that ba Chelsea are looking to get rid of Ross Barkley and have offered him to Aston Villa and Everton. Now, I could see Aston Villa and Everton taking on of Ross Barkley and him actually doing decently there. You know, I think Barkley isn't a player that Chelsea need in the squad anymore. Um, and if he goes there, you know, the finances might not be great on what we get for him or the, the wage might not be amazing for him. But he can really make a stay for the first team in one of those teams. So... I think this would be a wise move for him, a wise move for Chelsea, and those teams need strengthening, right? We've seen Everton, obviously, last year struggle massively. Ross Barkley can contribute goals. Maybe, you know, there's definitely areas lacking in his game, but it could be good for all parties, so we'll see how this one goes. That's going to be the end of the video, guys. If you did enjoy, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and the notification bell, and you'll never miss out on a future video that I upload. Thank you for watching, guys. I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.